Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another photo repeat tutorial. In this one, I'm just showing you guys how you can make a really cool looking thumbnail, sort of like what I do. And this will apply to any game, anything. You just have to customize it to your liking and do all that. But I'm gonna show you guys how it's done. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing you want to do is you want to be on photop.com or Photoshop, whatever one, but the uh, the things translate a little bit differently from this to Photoshop, so keep that in mind. So go ahead and hit new project. Make sure your dimensions are 1280 by 720. Feel free to name it whatever you'd like and hit create. Okay, so I'm going to be using a graphics pack for this tutorial, so I'm going to be using my own. Links will be in the description. Just go to file, open and click on the graphics pack. Here it is, and now we're ready to start working. So the dimensions for the graphics pack is 1280 by 720 if you use mine, but if you use someone else's, it might be different. So you can check by going up to image, canvas size, and make sure it's 1280 by 720. If it's not, change it to that because that's very important. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to stock images down here and unhide this layer and try to find one that we like. So I'm just going to go with a clean looking one. I think I like the top the best, this one. So we're going to go with this one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to type in some text. So go ahead and get your text tool. Type anywhere on the screen. And I'm going to type thumbnail for the first. Hit control A to select all of it and change the size to, let's see, this looks good good 200 works pretty good okay um now double click on your text or actually we're going to change the font so go ahead and select all of it and find a font you like um, i'll be back when i find it so i'm going to go with the font called bangers it's smaller now so i have to change the size once more so i'll try 300 and see how that looks that looks good hit that check mark move it to the center Okay, like this. Now we can start messing with the text. So go ahead and double click on your text layer and go to gradient overlay. Go ahead and check that. Go ahead and click in this gradient box and double click on this black box. Make it just a little bit darker than the white at the top. So kind of grayish. Hit OK. Go to inner glow. Change the color to white and make sure to change the blend mode to color dodge. Turn the opacity up to 100. Turn the spread and size up. It's preference on how much you want to turn it up. But just enough. So yeah, this looks pretty good. Now add a stroke. And then click the plus sign next to the stroke to add another stroke. And we're going to mess with the top one first. So go ahead and click on the top stroke. And turn the color to black. I'm going to turn the size up to about nine and I'm going to change the other stroke to white and turn the size up even more than nine. So about 21 looks pretty good. Uh, the settings are going to vary, so keep that in mind. Go ahead and double click on your text to select all of it and go up here to warp. Now for the style, you just want to change it to whatever you want. So like this arc. So this one basically curves it up or down depending on what you set it on. Um, I'm going to go with, let's see what I want to do. I'm going to go with arc upper and I'm going to set it to about 31%, maybe a little less. 25 looks good. Hit OK. So it kind of comes at you. I might change the font actually because it's all like really close together. So I'm going to change it real quick. All right, I went with Versa. I think this one looks a lot better. I'm gonna move that to the center right here. Okay, now go ahead and hit uh, Control J and move this layer down. Change it to whatever one you want. So I'm gonna change this text right here. So double click on it. I'm gonna change the color to orange this time. So make the white orange or whatever color you want and I'm gonna make it a darker orange I'm gonna go to my inner glow you basically have to change all the settings to whatever color you choose 
change the stroke to orange. I'm actually going to get rid of the warp on this one. I don't think it needs it. Just the top one does. So I'm going to get rid of that. Turn the size up a little bit more. Now let's do 250. You can edit free transform it so you can make it smaller. Like that. And since the background's purple, I'm going to change all the colors to purple. I keep changing my mind on things, but sometimes when you're designing, you have to just keep trying different things until it looks good. So that's what I'm going to do. It's good practice as well to keep adjusting everything. So yeah, that looks a lot better. I'm going to move these to the very top. So go ahead and move those text layers to the top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a border around it. So you can either use these borders or I'll show you how to make your own. Um, because you might not always have those. So go ahead and go to your rectangle tool, change the fill to white up here. And what you want to do is just hold left click and drag down until it's a decent thickness. So like this and then hit control J to duplicate it and move it to the other side and then do the same for the bottom like that control J move it to the top. Okay. So it looks pretty good. Now hold control and click every one of those rectangle shapes and then right click on it and merge it. So it's just one now if I move it. Now what you're going to want to do is double click on that shape layer you just made and change the blend mode to overlay. So now you can see that it's outlining the background. If you think it's too thick, that's fine. Just go up to edit and free transform and you can move it like this each side because you don't want it to be too thick. So yeah, that looks a lot better. Maybe uh, center this more like that. So it's looking pretty decent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some curves. So click on the very top layer and then click this little half circle to add an adjustment layer and go to curves. And now for red, move this line up and this one down for green, move this up on the line and this one down. And then for blue, move this one up and this one up. So like this, so this is what blue looks like. That's what green looks like. It makes an S and then red makes an S as well. So you'll see the difference without it and with it looks a lot better. It really brings out the colors. So this has to be on top of every other layer or else it won't apply to everything above it. So keep that on the top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding some lights. So go to the lights folder or you can bring in your own and start to unhide some of these like purple looks really nice with the purple. So I want to like get this over here as well. So I'm just going to duplicate this light layer and then go up to edit free transform, right click, and then I'm going to flip it horizontally and then flip it vertically. So it's coming from both sides and it looks really nice. And what you can also do is get another version of this color. So like a darker purple duplicate it, do the same thing, but this time get it in the corners that doesn't have any color. So flip vertically, and then get this other one and flip it the other way horizontally like that. So you can see without it and with it, it's looking really nice. So you just got to start layering. That's really all there is to it. When it comes to graphic design, you just got to keep adding layers. Don't add too many, but just enough for it to look good. And you just got to mess with a bunch of stuff. I'm going to move the particles to the very top except for I'm going to put it right below the curves. I'm just going to try to find some that look nice. Um, particles can really like enhance your picture, but also make it a little bit too much. So I'm going to go with a subtle one and change the opacity of it to where it's, you can't really see it as well, but it's still there. So you can see these little dots. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another adjustment layer. So go down here to the half circle, go to vibrance, turn the vibrance and saturation up a bit just to give it even more color. So if you hide it, you can see the difference. 
All right, so now I'm gonna add some effects. So move the effect to above everything besides the adjustment layers. And I'm gonna add these speedy lines, I guess. And uh, actually I'm gonna move it below the text because I want it to be under the text like that. So you got these speedy lines, but the blue doesn't really match. So I'm gonna click on that layer and then go up to image adjustments, hue and saturation. And I'm just gonna change the color of them to, I guess I could do it like that, or I can make it pinkish. I'll go with 50 hue. So now it blends in a lot better and it's looking pretty nice. You can turn the opacity down if you don't want them to be showing as much. All right, so now we're ready to export. So go up to file, export as, PNG, and make sure the quality is at 100% and hit save and it'll save to your downloads folder. Okay, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully this helped you guys. If it did, leave a like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate you guys watching all my videos and I've been on that grind. So hopefully there's more videos to come. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.